what I what I like is the inventive nature of woodtype, you know, because any two letters, any two words can look completely different, have a completely different meaning in a sense, with uh, with the choice of type that you use. So uh, there's endless varieties, um, and what you're doing is you're creating something based on words, but there's there's a point where you know that things are going to be right, where you feel they're right for your own purposes anyway. I think to me what I like about Letterpress is that it's a very practical, tactile occupation, you know, they're, they're, and there's so many elements to uh, the setting, design, layout, press work, all that. It, it just, um, it's an endless fascination. Um, and although you get quicker and quicker over time with uh, the process of setting, every time that you print something there's a certain joy as you pull your first proof off of the press. You may have to do another 200, but the first proof is always the, the joy initially. Um, so it's a, uh, I think it's, you know, it, it, it is a passion. Um, it's not necessarily rewarding financially, but I don't care about that really. I, I do it because I love the craft. So yeah, that's that. And once you start, you just, you, you just don't want to stop really. I did, I, I did painting, as I said I went to Mr Israel's, because Mummy did painting and I just kind of like loved watching her paint. And I think what I always liked about painting is the substance of the paint, just really love moving the thick, gungy um, oil paint around the canvas really. And, um, and then when I went to art school, me and a friend tried to, um, we tried to, to change departments or we wanted to go down to the ceramic department and ask if we could just have a go. And um, they gave us, they said, okay, they didn't, they didn't, they said, okay, here are the wheels, here's some clay, and this is what you do, and gave a very quick demonstration and left us to it. And um, the clay they gave us was a very gritty, crank clay. And when you spin it at speed like this and you stick your hands on it to hold it down, it's really abrasive against the skin. And after about five minutes, me and my friend looked at our hands and we were bleeding. <laughs> and we couldn't, it can't possibly be the way that you make ceramics bleeding like this. This is what every potter goes through. Um, but of course they did it on purpose, just to try and put us off. They hated us changing departments. It was just too complicated for them. Um, but it didn't put me off. And then when I left um, um, <clears throat> and I set up my painting studio in our first studio that Graham and I and Mike had, um, in the funeral parlour, the next funeral parlour. Um, I started doing an even, a local evening class just down by the Barbican at the Checker Centre, just because I was interested in it. And, um, you know, I like to throw, I just love the material. And I don't see it as very different from paint. And what I liked is that I made a form that was kind of like, like this, rounded or limited, and then I had to work out how to do my imagery, life drawing or painting with with sort of liquid clays and slips across it and um, my, I, I was much more much happier doing that than being up in my painting studio facing a blank canvas and not really having a subject matter or not quite being able to commit to what it was about 
And now I think I'm sort of, sort of bringing the two ideas together. I think but it took me a long time to really properly commit to myself or say it out loud. Interesting question to start. I was working as a chef for a long time and it never really suited my nature. My nature is something which is very much in the moment. So I grab ingredients and I put them together and baking suited my style where I could just sort of create something. I had a real good feel for it. Um, and I worked my way through Australia and then came over to Europe as a journeyman baker. So that's something where you haven't finished your trade yet, you go through and you work with people and you work with masters and then as you work with different people you gain experience then you can go and do your final examinations which I went back to New Zealand and did. So I became a master baker by travelling through Europe and coming back and doing that. It's, as you said, the reveal is very interesting. I mean you start with if you start the day with nothing, you've got flour, water, and you create breads from this, you get to the end of the day and you see this big stack of things you've made and you've created something. It's very rewarding. Uh, but also seeing people eat the product, that's also very rewarding. So you know that you've created this piece of food, people are getting energy from it, and you're part of that process. It's a very um, spiritual and holistic process as well. So it's a very esoteric thing. It, when I started baking, it, there was a push for very quick baking, uh, lots of additives, sugars, things like this. And now, you know, there was, a, there was a group of us that were really looking into the old ways of doing things. There was a very small group of people doing sourdough baking and trying to bring back the knowledge from previous bakers. And so the change has been going from fast baking to slow baking organic grains from fast processed grains, so bringing things back. So everyone wants to go back to the start. I mean, my personality, I, I, it's, I couldn't at all. It would drive me crazy. It's, uh, I need to be doing something which is creative, um, and baking was a combination of science and creativity. So for me, my degree was in science, and I love art, and you know, food is one of the things I love and baking is something which brings all of those things together. It's something very rewarding, very creative and also very cerebral at the same time.